Hello, you all. <laughs> uh, so, um, I, uh, if you have any questions, just throw them and I try to answer them. Uh, I will mainly talk about the installation. Uh, and what people almost never notice when they are just passing by is that it is paper. Everything is made out of, out of paper. So there are no real wood planks or no real oil cans. It's all made of paper. So we will see that while we're like walking on the other side also. So um, the idea, I think, I guess the idea came when like Chris said, why don't you build an outhouse? And uh, Richie and me have been, sometimes Richie, God been sending me pictures of like crazy stuff going on in Texas and they have this uh, yearly paint your outhouse uh, competition or something. So, so everything connected in that, in that kind of thought that we have. So I thought, yeah, why not? It's, it's a great idea. And um, so, so the idea of having the outhouse is like someone been sitting there making like all these drawings and, and it just comes out like a, like a machine uh, of drawings that like just comes out. And um, you know, all, like, like the, the coin machines that goes like this and you put a coin and then they build up like this until they fall down. Sometimes you want to kick the machine to get the money, the, the money that falls down. So this is, I was trying to actually make like a nice slope of, of drawings coming out from the outhouse. Um, so, um, and all the drawings, everything, and, and, and the interesting thing I think is like everything is no fake uh, like white papers, everything is drawings. And that makes you like, when you see it, you really want to you know, lift up and see what's under. You, you can see a fruit or something else you like. So, so it's uh, it's all. Um, and, and these drawings are not. I didn't make them this month or something when, while I was here. It's uh, drawings from my shelf back home in Sweden. So they're like randomly. I didn't I didn't choose the drawings. I just took them from my shelf back home and. Uh, some of them are recent, some of them are old drawings. Um, at my studio, um, we have a, a, they stock a lot of highly like pallets in, where I have my studio. So I started to make replicas of, of everything around me. So that's why I've been using the, the, the pallets. Um, I, like, I like the idea of the pallet because it's uh, and usually you, you put the, you put things on top of it and you ship it somewhere um, so it comes and go and they are like um, it's kind of the palette is kind of our our um, our way of communicating like also with, with the merchandises and things whatever around. Um, and usually you see the palettes lying around everywhere you can find them here and there. Um, <laughs> also the oil cans, there are, there are also um, paper folded. Um, so the, the orange, um, the orange uh, is the most recent uh, oil can I, I did. So that was like last summer or something, I was out walking with my dog and someone was moving the, the, the grass. And he had an uh, orange uh, oil can. And it looked so nice to the green grass. So I went home and I made the same, <laughs> same one. Yeah, so, so here you see a lot of drawings um, coming out from that house. You can see this side. Um, I like this installation on this side of the... So it's like they've been trying to clean up the place here, but everything just falls out. And, um, and some, some of them probably be like trying to clean up the place, you know, put everything in order. Um, and the 
here you see also the MDF board that I'm using for printing the, uh, the wood, uh, wood cross. And you can actually see the wood cross line on the over there. So, uh, so that's not paper, that's MDF board. The print, printed tools, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, I, I make a lot of these IKEA brackets also, <laughs> and, uh, and they are also paper. And I, I think the, this piece of art is uh, for me is one of the best piece of art I ever made because it it's uh, it goes if you according to the art history. It's, it's, it is an abstract work of art because it's paper with black dots because it's not a bracket, it's like paper so it's totally abstract work but when you see it, it's, it's super realism so it goes from being an abstract art to super realism so I like, I like that art history thing with this work of art so I'm very satisfied with that artwork. <laughs> 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 so I bought some cowboys. I made, actually I not made those cow I've been doing this cowboy for many years. So it's, it's a kind of an autism thing I have. I, I repeat the, the drawing. And if, if there is a drawing that I like, I make the drawing all over again. So it's, it's it's, it's a weird thing actually because you should do that with prints, but I never make editions, almost never. So so uh, so, but I make the same drawing all over again. So it's like kind of a myth. So I made I made those cowboys for a show in Canada uh, last year, and I really like it. So so this is like my art show because I didn't want to toss him on the floor. I like him so much, so I, so I really want to show him. Look how good I am. <laughs> In a way. So, so, so here's, here's the exhibition. Uh, so, and, and over here, and over here you have, um, here you have the youngsters that have been like having a party, hanging out, doing fun stuff, building all these card houses, uh, like card houses, maybe they throw stones on the, on the cans and trying to get things down when you have like a, a game you're working on. And, uh, and also, so the thing I like, so when I, um, uh, when I ship this show, everything came flat. So I had students to help me to fold the planks and put the fence up and everything. So without the students at, here at TCU, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be here today. It would be something totally different. So I, I'm so happy for Sarah Lynn and the students to help me out because it was a huge job um, to do that. So, so everything com comes flat. Even the, the, um, the card house, so it comes all flat. So, um, um, and then when you come to the show, uh, you just uh, like this. Oops. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. You need to be brutal to get it up. <laughs>
So, so if, if someone wants to buy, we can actually ask the guy or the, the student that work here to to get take one from the shop. <laughs> it's better to have them here because it's like they come from the installation. So, and paper cups. These these are like all message paper cups and here's for art shows it says buyer seller and spectator so you, you, you just check the box <laughs> and then it says like carpe diem the two naked guys but still they have like uh, the head in their box so that it's kind of hard sometimes so yeah so um, i guess that it yeah. That's that's it. Any questions? How did you get it all in your suitcase? Oh, uh, the, yeah. So it's two two uh, two packages that, that was sent with um, some company, uh, and um, so two packages, and then I came with uh, with the paper mugs and the cans and the drawings in my suitcase. Pretty small. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So from this experience of building an outhouse, are you already starting to imagine another structure or some kind of architectural installation for the future? Yeah, I uh, I've been having so it's so it's so good to have for artists to, to have like shows because you don't you don't do this in your studio. This is more like you fantasize, but you can't realize it in the studio because it's like kind of dumb having I mean, uh, <laughs> this thing. So, so I've been having ideas like this. I've been having ideas to have like smaller houses on top of the pallets that builds up, and uh, I've been working with like bridges and wood, uh, wood cuts. So, so yeah, I, I definitely want to. Continue. This is the first time I actually combine the, the drawings with the woodcuts. So I've never done that before. Usually I've been having the, the drawings on, on the wall. But I, I like it this way. I, I really do. So I have to say thank you to the TCU Gallery and <laughs> to all of you that have been working here with me. So. There's just so much to see. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's also a thing with with art, I, I guess that it's it's all for the visitor because I, I can't I can't imagine what you see. I mean, we see different things. We have different stories to bring into the art. Right. So so I bring my story, and you have your story. Uh, and Richie has his, and, and you know, and Matthew comes with this. So so it's um, I think that's that's fun. It's like a film. Like a movie, what happened here, and, and, and to to stretch this project would be like to to have like three three actors trying to you know make something, make a play out of it, improvise mm -hmm. would be super fun. So that's maybe is to overdo it, but <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I met. I met. The show today. Yeah, so so I, I met Richie in 2006. We were um, we were part participating in the same workshop in New York City, the All Triangle Artists workshop for two weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so so we immediately kind of you know met, and uh, he's a great guy and uh, easy going guy. And uh, so, so we kept having like conversations, and uh, so, uh, and then I uh, guess we had like another show in New York together, like a group show that so, we were in 2008 or. Is that part of the triangle thing again? Yeah, I think so. 
And then after that, you came to Sweden, I guess. I think so. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, because I have a gallery, an artist run gallery in Sweden, and uh, we've been working with a lot of international guests to, to bring them into to Fallen and our very small city. Uh, so, we like having international guests over. And Richie's art was so different from what you can see in Fallen and actually what you can see in Sweden. Uh, and uh, so, we, we invited them to to build a sculpture, because it, it's impossible, it is not, but money-wise, we couldn't bring his sculptures over, so he had to, he had to build one while, while staying in Fallen for like two weeks or something. And he did a show at the Dala Namon Morgan. Yeah. So, uh, and that was like a really great show we did. And yeah, so, so and we've been like, we talked like, Almost every week, so um, so we keep having our content. We, we, I think we have like the same same kind of angle on things. Uh, so uh, yeah, since it's, it's a good thing. I don't know more what to say, but just, <laughs> that's that's the story, I guess. And uh, you've been like to Sweden two or three times. Yeah. 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 You're welcome again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you. Well, thanks, John. Thanks for Thank you. appreciate that insight and also the introduction to Richie. We're going to look at yeah. Richie's yeah. work now. So, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do, you, what do you want me to say? Tell, tell us about your uh, wonderful sculpture, machine, object. Uh, there's so many. studied since 1998 called neurolinguistic programming the idea is that people communicate through they, they take information and they communicate with the five senses hence like musicians do the audio and like people who are mechanics use their body aesthetically and then you know artists are really visual you know paintings and projections and videos and everything and, uh, and then chefs even you know, they use their taste buds a lot. And then there's the people who smell things, uh, should be perfumers, essentially. And so I was taking some classes at UN UNT years ago with Vernon Fisher, and he said in a painting class, I think maybe a hybrid forms class, that uh, if you can get the the audience member to look at your work for longer than three seconds, and you've, you've succeeded, at the art game. So that was that's always stuck with me, I think. And then pairing that with the communication system and how all that stuff works. I started building these uh, these pieces of art that have as many sensual things as I could put in. Like it has the audio that's playing by binaural beats and also uh, like data frequencies uh, for memory. And then I have food products, kind of universal food products like popping corn, and I have a, a grill that you can like grill hot dogs on or other food things that are in the openings usually. And uh, there's, there's, there's a fan which, which will rub on someone's skin and then play with the air on their, on their arms. So it, it, it helps people to uh, sense their own self in space. So it actually is working on, on that's actually I think the sixth sense is the camera what that's called prime. Some sort of having the sense of having your body in space. So uh, there's popcorn that's been popping and I you know I start adding kind of silly cultural things into it like gold chains and dreadlocks and 
and whatever whatever the piece starts kind of feeding back to me, and, and the piece actually is a, is, a, is a loop feedback on how the audience responds to the pieces. So I'm opening nights, I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention to what everybody else is paying attention to, and then that, that will fold into the next piece. Or someone will come up to me in the show and say, oh, well, there, how, what about this, or what about that? And then that will fold into the, into the piece itself. So it's, it's, it's really, a, this is a feedback loop since I think I've been making this style of stuff since like 1998, 99 or so. so. So there's this one, there's a black one over here, but then there's also drawings in the hallway that relate to the pieces. And the drawings have text on them that uh, it's basically convincing the audience to like them. This, this one has a coffee maker on it. You can, you can brew fresh coffee from it. So, like, work going, working with, with John Rasmus for so long, since 2006, you know, he's, we both are playing with that. He's playing with idea, ideas on how to build things and ship things, but he's also using, like, his, his, uh, his favorite piece of artwork that he made, the brackets. And that's kind of a, a, a joke. Kind of, it's like a, a, a push at IKEA. So I'm kind of doing the similar thing, where it's if you go to IKEA, you can walk in and see all these this, this, these whole rooms set up with all their stuff, with their beds and their kitchens and all that sort of stuff. So I thought it'd be funny to start making sculptures that provide all those things. So if a, if a collector buys these, you know they can wake up in the morning, and make themselves a cup of coffee, or or use the crock pot to make chili or something like that. I just, I just think it's, it's kind of silly. But it also relates to the work I'm making, or, or the ideas, I guess. And this, this one, when I was making hot dogs, it's covered in fat and grease now, which will stay there for the rest of its life. And then on this one, I had to make, I had to make entry points because I forgot how some of the, some of the buttons to turn things on, so I have to these are actually hamster balls, and so I reach in and turn on the, the popcorn maker. And then I, you know, and then it's just like so. It's a, it's a self-contained piece, you know, and it's pretty, it's pretty much functions within its own space. So I started adding projections of ghosts. So I thought that was kind of silly, like the ghosts of artwork past. Then lights shooting outwards. There's a, there's a black light on the side. And then, then there's the interior lighting that pulls people in. So, and there's also small mirrors that reflect the, the person. Everybody likes. Most people love to look at themselves as mirrors. And then, then that, that also produces movement within the piece itself. Was it? Is it Michael, the guy from Stiletto, the Italian guy who does the mirrors with the so I was, Someone introduced me to that, and I thought that was really funny. Because you, if you put a mirror in a piece of artwork, you get movement within the piece. You don't even have to put in any movement into it. The Dan Graham. Dan Graham. Richie, could you talk about your selection process, particularly for some of the objects which are really sort of archived in these little bubbles? So oh, yeah. The candies and yeah. some of the food stuffs, and are they kind of change over time. Uh, but could you talk about like the things that you're selecting and why? Well these are these are uh, McDonald's hamburgers and french fries. I always wanted to, to try that experiment where someone puts the hamburger, lays it out for three years and it's exactly the same. I actually I accidentally didn't give them time enough to, to dry so they went in warm and they steamed themselves in there so they start producing mold. So that's kind of nice though but in, in previous pieces, I, I did that on purpose, where I would, I would take a frozen chicken nugget and encase it in that and blew it up and then put it in a piece. And so for the opening, it would, it would explode. It would pop in the, And so if someone got close to it, they'd be like, oh, if somebody smells like somebody farted or it's just like a rotten smell, so the piece is actually kind of rotten. This one hasn't burst yet, but the white one has, has popped, one of its hamburgers. It's not too bad, it just smells like, a, like just a musky stink. And then the candy is just 
kind of looking for stuff that's colorful that'll push itself out of the blackness here. But I'm also like, you know, people, when people when people see certain things, they have particular reactions. Like the popcorn, when the, when the popcorn's popping, the smell comes in, or when they see it, it automatically, not automatically, but for most people, they think about going to a movie so that they may have a, an excitement, an unconscious excitement about something. And so it's just stuff I've eaten. Like the, these are just pistachios. And there's some of my hair around here. There's like a big chunk of hair of mine right here. There's sausages up here. There's uh, beetles on this side. There's those are June bugs, Texas June bugs. Some of it's autobiographical. Some of it's just color, colorful and like there's Swedish fish. So you know John's <laughs> John's got a big part of it too sometimes. So it's, it's fun. And the shape is the shapes are reminiscent of the human body, so it pulls people in. And, and, and everything's different on, on all sides, so it becomes a people get to walk around it and then it changes. I mean, and that's that's a conscious decision. It's been interesting watching you as you've been setting these up, the way that you're tending the <laughs> machines and, and giving them power or giving them water or they're very generous objects, like what yeah. they're the, the possibility of experiences for the viewer. Yeah. But you're giving a lot of your energy to the object to yeah. enable it to do that, and that's a kind of invisible labor that we don't see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's a feedback. I mean, there's just, there's circles and systems that run with these pieces. I mean, with everything, really. I think that's pretty fun. But the. But also, when, when, whenever these things stop working, they just, it's, it's done. And that's what people have to understand, like with, with these pieces. Because <laughs> once the lights start stop working, they're not going to get replaced. Is it's, that like just practically you can't get in there? I just, yeah. I just think it's part of the it's piece. It's done. Yeah. Right. Right. It's just like it should. But you, like, there are certain things I did leave where you, like the, atom, the atomizer can be moved and replaced. But everything else is just like, it just becomes the artwork. The artwork, you know, just like the whole the food just kind of starts, starts to stop. Starts, stops to start working. And I just, the black coloration is just a straight off the shelf black. So if it does get damaged anywhere, it can easily be just touched up and repainted. Like the the scale is only well, they're you know the same if you if you buy a shark, it only grows as big as the tank it's in. I, I recently, well, in the past couple of years, I've had a studio space that's like much larger than the garage I was working in. So suddenly, I have these pieces that are super related to the body. They're you know they're super relational. So and I guess like the question I have. Is what are like what's something that you want to do after this project? I'm sure you probably have ten ideas already. But in the process of making these, have you been sort of gathering ideas for other things that you want to yeah, test I mean, out? These are just a, a one one line of words I play with in order to make up the bigger pieces. There's there's a I just kind of play with ideas with these. I mean, there's these goopy kind of form structures are are like. The next, the, there's like this stuff where it's all cobbled together and stuff, but then there's the, there's another piece, uh, there's another line of work that's just the aluminum structures and everything's pared down and it's super purposeful, like, I mean, extremely purposeful, like the, the, there's purposeful sound and it's, it's working with the lights. And so on, like if you think about like the five senses, there's there's drop downs, like there's details on all those things that, you, that they're, with. And I'll leave that for other people to, <laughs> to, to, to discover. I mean, I could talk to other people in private about it, but that would just, it would kind of pull the you know, stuff out from underneath me. So, so there's, there's a the piece I did in our case in 2009 that was a huge structure that I crawled inside of, like a, like a cockpit. So that was, 
but that's the other one. I would just say, I mean, I, I find this so, the form so uh, fascinating and kind of invigorating to look yeah. at just the variety of textures and possibilities, but also they're pretty disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and I have that sense that you're interested in those, you know, that's that push pull of all that range yeah. of responses oh, yeah. from people. So, I mean, it works. Yeah. <laughs> The push pull thing is like is is paramount in, in a good piece of artwork. And I think that I idea think. that this is art, yeah. and so you know, for many people, they won't have ever seen anything like this before, and certainly right. not in its somewhat interactive nature. And so it's it's absurd and difficult and pretty amazing uh, as, as art objects to think you know to think that this is an art object. <laughs> You should meet the collectors who buy them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're real fun. I love their, 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 I mean, it's like, they're the best people. Now they live with them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's a piece that's this size down in Houston right now. That's, I mean, it's, I made that in 2006. That's it's still, it's still there, but it was all, like, I, this is like, my, this is coming out of hot glue. This is not hot glue, but I used to do hot glue. So I realized that hot glue is kind of temperamental and temporal, and it can be really affected by UV lights. So I, I decided to move away from hot glue, but still create, maintain the textures as well. The push pull is, I think, really important, as, as well as the, the push pull on a piece. You know, it creates like a almost like a static spot where the viewers is like kind of stuck in it. And that's that also feeds into the NLP, the hypnosis stuff I've been studying for so long. And uh, I think that another really important piece. I mean, John does it all the time because he, he he's a filmmaker, but he's also an artist, and that he knows that the details are just as important as the big picture. I mean, and if you look at a Baran's Bosch piece. You see, you know, you see the structure within the painting itself that draws people in. It's, it's going to be the triangle, like coming out of the Virgin Mary, you know, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. That can get transferred into the structure of the painting. So from a distance, it's people have seen that enough time to like, oh, that's unconsciously that's good from a distance. But then they get drawn in, see the, the minute details, which are just as fascinating as the big picture. And they are, the objects are mesmerizing in a way that I didn't quite, and the way that they work with John's work and yeah. so Chris's work, yeah. it's actually between the three of you, that, mechan that mechanism of being sort of mesmerized, but in very different ways, yeah. it's really great to see in one yeah. space within one kind of That's definitely like part of what's yeah, it's definitely like a layer that's happening within the whole show. It's pretty, pretty fun. And the colors, there's a color, and then there's this crazy texture that have been happening. And like, Chris has the direction. Like, when you start with this guy, you know, I think he noticed this, or somebody noticed that, where it's like, the birds are flying that way, and then his pieces, the pieces are like, the, the, yeah, and then the guys are moving this way, so it's like, it has this circle effect. 